Welcome to the next installment in my lecture series for the Principles of Microeconomics course here at Rutgers University. And in this lecture, what I'm going to go over is the relationship between total fixed cost and average fixed cost. And you can, as you can see here, I have, I'm using my OmniGraph sketcher here, and I have graphed out what total fixed cost is. If you remember, total fixed cost is uh, our sunk costs. These are costs that you incur prior to starting your business and they do not vary with the level of output that you produce. So that's why we have this horizontal line here. That your fixed costs are constant. They do not change with the level of output. So make sure you remember that. Um, I've scaled this in the thousands because I'm going to be doing uh, a little bit of graphing here to illustrate this. So one of the things I'm going to do is I also set up an Excel spreadsheet and you can see here that I have a column for total fixed cost and as you can see here that if we scroll straight down that your total fixed cost is unchanging with the level of output so as our output increases and I only did this up to 50 if it's 1 or if it's 50 your total fixed cost is equal to $5,000 alright so I also have a column Q that just represents your output level and as, as you noticed previously that regardless of what your output level is total fixed cost remains the same. So average fixed cost is just total fixed cost divided by Q. So if I just type in the formula equals and I pick one of the elements of the total fixed column and divide it by Q that gives me average fixed cost. And I'm getting that signs. And uh, let me actually get rid of. Well, no, I'll leave them. Leave the uh, cents in there. The decimal places in there. So if I copy that straight down, I'll just be copying that same formula instead of calculating it for different rows. And if I go down to 5,000, you can see that once I get up to 50, my average fixed cost is equal to 100. 50 divided, I mean, sorry, 5,000 divided by 50 is equal to $100. Now you can see here I have another column that I set up, average fixed cost in thousands. The reason why I did that is because I've scaled total fixed cost and average fixed cost to be in the thousands. So 5 is the equivalent to 5,000. So what I need to do is I just need to uh, scale that and just take my average fixed cost and divide it by a thousand. Just, you know, that's not important for the course. I just did this. I just want to explain to you why I did this. Uh, it's because, like, the scaling on the, uh, the graph that I have is, is in thousands, so I have to scale this down into thousands um, in order for it to be appropriate. All right. So let us take, for example, one through. 10, quantities of 1 through 10. And if I copy those and place them into my OmniGraph Sketcher, you can see that I just transpose the data into there. And if I connect those points, what I get is average fixed cost. All right, so when fixed cost is equal to 5,000, my output is equal to 1. Average fixed cost is equal to 5,000. When my output is equal to 2, it's equal to, average fixed cost is equal to 2,500. So all I'm doing is taking 5,000 and dividing by Q, and then I'm, ca and then I'm uh, graphing that on the graph here. And the most important thing to realize is, is that at the beginning levels of output, as I increase Q, you can see there are dramatic decreases in average fixed cost. But when Q is increasing, you can see that declines in average fixed costs are getting smaller and smaller. Let me actually um, take this out and go back to where I was originally. And let me pull up a little bit more data. Instead of going from output of 1 to an output of 10, let's go from an output of 1 to an output of 25. Let me bring up OmniGraph Sketcher. Let me paste that in. And you can see, again, the impact of that. And if I connect all those points, you can see once again that 
we have average total cost curve that we're doing, which is just total fixed cost divided by Q. And you can see as Q is increasing, average, av I'm sorry, average fixed cost, not average total cost, average fixed cost is declining, but that decline is getting smaller and smaller. So you can see as Q is going up, we're getting closer and closer to zero. Uh, let me go back to that original starting point again. And instead of going from an output of 1 to an output of 25, let me do an output of 1 to 50. And let's see what the impact of that is. Let me paste that in there. Connect those points. That's average fixed cost. We drag that over there so it's easier to see. So you can see that, that that's the relationship I want you to understand when it comes between total fixed cost and average fixed cost. The thing that you should realize is that as your quantities go up, your average fixed cost is getting smaller and smaller. And as a matter of fact, as, as your quantity approaches infinity, um, average fixed cost is approaching zero. So that's something I want you to understand. And when, you know, when I talk about uh, spreading your overhead costs out over more and more levels of output, this is what a business person is talking about. If you have fixed costs, the more you produce, the smaller those average fixed costs are. And remember, your total costs have two components, fixed costs and variable costs. If you can increase your output levels so you're spreading those fixed costs over more and more units, you are, uh, for example, here, if I only sold one unit, my, the, my average fixed cost for that one unit is equal to $5,000. All right. If I produce 50 units, my average fixed cost is only equal to $10. $100, I'm sorry. <laughs> my math's not too good on the top, off the top of my head. Um, so realize that, that at an output of 1, average fixed cost is equal to 5000 At an output of 50, it's equal to $100. If I take that all the way out to an output of 5000 my average fixed cost is only going to be equal to a dollar. So I'm spreading that $5,000 uh, a fixed cost out over successively higher units, um, so I'm able to spread those costs out over higher levels of output. So that's an important thing to understand about uh, about fixed cost. Uh, hopefully that was of some help. I just want to make sure you understand that the importance of what total fixed cost is, the fact that total fixed cost does not vary with the level of output, and what is the implication of that to average fixed cost. If fixed cost, if we have total fixed costs at a certain level, they do not change with the level of output. So therefore, as Q increases, your average fixed cost is going to decline, and the greater Q becomes, the closer and closer you get that those average fixed costs, uh, you're getting closer and closer to zero.